Well, good morning. good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. This is on the church calendar, Christ the King Sunday, but for us it is the first Sunday of Advent because um, the fourth Sunday of Advent would fall on Christmas Eve, so we're getting extra Advent. We're going to have that fourth Sunday, so today is the first Sunday of Advent, and if you recall from last year, the first Sunday of Advent is our service of Hanging of the Greens. So that will be our service today um, with a lot of song. You may have heard a song then. <laughs> Don't worry, we're not singing all the verses. Um, song and scripture. So they're all in the red book, the new ELW hymnals. So you can follow along in there. A couple of announcements this morning. After worship today, anyone that missed the acolyte training that would like to be trained as an acolyte, you are invited to be trained today immediately following worship. I would be happy to show you the ropes. Thank you to everyone who came out yesterday to decorate. The church looks beautiful. So thank you to everyone. Let's give everyone a round of applause. Being that it is Advent, we will have our midweek Advent services on Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock p.m. We are using a new worship setting, Joyous Light Evening Prayer. It was debuted Wednesday night before Thanksgiving and led by Pauline, and she did a wonderful job, and it is a beautiful service, so I encourage you to come Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. A couple more things. I have these lined up so I remember. I have some... Advent devotionals, um, there are a number of these. There's some for kids, some for adults, um, some for families. If you are interested in taking one, I'm going to leave them here on the front row. So please take one after worship if you would like an Advent devotional. The reverse Advent calendar, I have put little pictures on it. If you are a visual person like me and it's easier to have a little picture um, these are on the table in the narthex. I encourage you to take one and to participate in the reverse advent calendar where we uh, buy an item whenever you can. It's nice if you went to the store every day, but let's be realistic. I don't go to the store every day, although the people at Walmart may think I do. Um, so buy these items, bring them in a box, and we will keep them in the hallway. That's my understanding, in the hallway out here underneath the coat rack. Coming up in January, January 7th, we are going to read the Bible together next year. We are using this version called The Story. So we are going to read our way through the Bible. The weekly preaching and services will be based on one chapter a week. I believe there are 31 chapters, so we will go well into the summer with this. So we begin with the story of creation and we will go all the way through Revelation. So these books will be available um, starting next week. I will bring them in, or you can buy one if you use a Kindle, or if you want to go online and get your own copy. It's called The Story. All right, any other announcements? Reminding you that next week we have a raise right order due if you need some Christmas shopping done. You have a chance next week. Our Christmas neighbor's tree is all ready. So if you go down the street, stairs, right up the hallway, the tree is all ready. We've adopted two families this year, five kids total. And there's lots of different options on our price range. If you have any questions, please see me. Gifts are due by December 17th. Just place them back underneath the tree, unwrapped. <coughs> Collection plate when it goes through. 
it lists different categories and talents that God has maybe given you. Fill in where you can help out in the church and make God's church beautiful and the church reaching out to the community. Also, men, don't forget the men's breakfast, December 9th, down at Park River at 8 o'clock. Please let Barry know so he can get a count to send in. Thank you. Take a few minutes now and read that survey and fill it out. There's some pencils in the racks there, so put it in the collection plate. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? We'll give folks a minute or so to look over the survey. more time than that I'm seeing next stairs. Raise your hand if you need more time. Okay. Um, last week, it was interesting, I did give the children a version of a time and talent survey. And it was wonderful and beautiful to see the responses that we got. How they can use their talents here to serve the church. Yes, thank you. Flowers are from all of you in memory of your mother. Please stand as you are able. We will begin with the call to worship. It doesn't matter whether or not you can have faith, whether or not you are cynical or despairing, fulfilled or hopeless. What matters to God is simply that you are here. We are entering the time of Advent in preparation for Christmas. Advent reminds us 
that if God is to be born again in the most ordinary parts of our world and our lives, that we need to prepare for. We need to make the space in our lives where love might be born. Welcome to this tiny corner of a harsh and dark world. Together, let us practice being ready in the faith that Christ will come. and celebrate the coming of Christ with traditions, with worship, with reverent waiting. There are many symbols of waiting, of preparation. There are many customs to hail the Advent, which is Latin for the coming. Foremost among the symbols is the Advent wreath, the wreath of coming. The circle of the wreath, like God himself, has no beginning and no end. A circle of evergreen, a circle of meaning, a symbol of that which is as eternal as God, as victorious as the coming of Christ, and as everlasting as his promises. The Advent wreath is a symbol of hope, a symbol of four Sabbaths of waiting. Four candles light the wreath. Three are blue or purple. Purple is the color of kings. It is also the color of repentant preparation. Many churches have begun to use blue instead of purple as a means of distinguishing Advent from Lent. Some use blue to signify the color of the night sky or the waters of new creation in Genesis 1. On the third Sunday of Advent, the rose candle is set aglow, remembering the unfettered joy of the angel's song. The center panel is white, pure white, lit when Christ is come. The wreath is made with carefully chosen materials, each a symbol of the Christ. Holly is used to symbolize the crucified Christ. Legend says holly was used to fashion the crown of thorns for the head of the crucified Christ and that the berries were yellow <coughs> until stained red by his blood. Mistletoe symbolizes Christ the everlasting. Ancient Druids noted how, when all of the trees were bare, mistletoe remained green. It is also a love symbol. In Christian legend, it became a symbol of eternity. Christ the everlasting, Christ the eternal, Christ the beloved. So in the wreath, we symbolize the coming of Christ, the victorious Christ, the Prince of Peace, Christ the eternal, Christ, the revelation of God. He comes. Let us prepare for his coming with joy. <coughs>
Maybe we met the time you asked your boss for a raise after you had just sealed the big deal. Perhaps it was a time you looked into your child's face for the very first time and your heart swelled with dreams of the future. Or maybe I'm a stranger to you. Maybe tooth after tooth just lay under your pillow, never being exchanged for anything at all. Maybe you ended up at the prom with your most annoying cousin. So boring. Maybe you lost your job and weren't sure how you were going to make ends meet. Perhaps that beautiful baby hasn't grown up to make the cho choices you wished for or didn't get the chance to grow up in life. Maybe you are wondering if life is even worth living. You see, I can be hard to find in this world. This world is full of doubt, skepticism, tragedy, and so much uncertainty. Hopelessness is at an all-time high. So if we have never met, I'd like to introduce you to Jesus. <laughs> that may seem strange to you that you know me. If you know me, you must know Jesus. You gotta meet but I'm completely inseparable from the Son of God. You see, just as the world is synonymous with doubt and uncertainty, Jesus is the very definition of hope. Because he never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is a rock, a fortress, a deliverer. He is strength and weakness. He is faithfulness. And he loves you. In the midst of your darkest, most desperate hour, he will lift your chin, take your hand, and introduce you to me. And when you know me, your future looks positively certain. You see, I am hope. I speak to your very soul about the goodness of God and the strength of God's character. And when you know me, your heart swells with assurance of his undying love for you, I am hope, and I would love to meet you. You continue with lighting at that name. Please stand for confession of <clears throat> Creator God, you created the earth whole and round. You created us to be whole people, but we have become fragmented, cracked, and broken. We have been broken by false promises, lost relationships, shattered trust. We have become cracked with the experience of systematic sin, prejudice, oppression, and fear. We have become fragmented, building up walls instead of lending hands. Forgive us when we have done the breaking. Heal us where we have been hurt. Let your light shine through our cracks and scars, so that we might bring light to the world. Showing that in you we are made whole, in you we find healing, in you we find renewed life. Help us to forgive, to love, to mend. Amen. God is the potter and we are the clay. 
When we are cracked and broken, God helps to bring us back together. Sometimes we don't feel the same afterwards, but God uses every piece and offers us the newness of life to begin again.
Isaiah 52, verses 2 through 5. For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground, he had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hid their faces, hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. <coughs> Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. When all the earth is brown, when the leaves have departed the trees, evergreens stand in lonely vigil until the earth again is green. Evergreens shout to us about the hoped for coming of green again. Evergreens stand ever ready to remind us of joyous hope. The joyous reality of the eternal presence of the Christ child, the eternal presence in all the world. Legend tells us that long ago, Evergreens were not forever colored with virgin leaves. Before the birth of the Eternal One, before the coming, the evergreen was bare like other trees around. Let us begin this legend with a recorded event written in scripture and recorded by Matthew. The Gospel writer says, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, and the angel said to him, rise up and take the infant Jesus and his mother and escape with them to Egypt. Stay in Egypt until I bid you return. You are no longer safe. Go, for Herod sends his soldiers to seek out the child and destroy him. So Mary and Joseph and their instant and their infant child left the warm and secure, warmth and security of their land and journeyed into Egypt. <coughs> Hastily they gathered their meager belongings. Into the dark of night they stole away. Escape they must, the jealous wrath of Herod and his men. Escape they must from the death decree handed down by Herod. No word can be said of their hasty departure. No notice of a planned destination. Friends and family could not know of their going, lest they too come under the decree of death. Over rocky hills and dusty roads they traveled wearily. Mary and the infant on the back of a donkey, Joseph, alert and watchful, walking beside them. With heavy, saddened hearts and fearful, weary bodies, they made their way all night long and into the following long day. Mid-afternoon, dust in the distance behind them came. Fast-riding soldiers came, soldiers sent from Herod, sent, out, sent to carry out Herod's dreadful mission. Where could they hide? Where could the Holy Family find protection? The hillside was barren, offering no shield. Quickly, a frightened Joseph guided Mary and her child into a clump of cedars on a hill. Immediately, the bare cedar twigs greened with color, thickened with growth to shield the holy family. The white berries of the cedar tree turned to sapphire blue to match the robe that Mary wore that day. So Mary, mother of Jesus, in a robe of sapphire blue could blend with cedar trees and grow unnoticed by passing to the soldiers, past the Holy Family with the band of Herod's men, never seeing, never knowing Mary, Joseph, and the infant Jesus were safely sheltered in a clump of green cedars with berries of sapphire blue. Since that day, cedars and plants like them have never shed their leaves, never lost their green, for they sheltered the Holy Family, forever green to honor the day they received the infant Christ child. Evergreen, everlasting, eternal, green branches are a part of our preparation, our waiting, a symbol of hope, a symbol of eternity, a reminder of love received. Evergreen is a symbol of the eternal promise of renewal, a symbol of the eternal and everlasting God. <coughs>
ye seek water, and there is none, and their tongue is parched with thirst. I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. <coughs> I will open rivers of the bare heights, the fountains in the midst of the, in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water, and the dry land springs of water. I will put the wilderness, I will put in the wilderness the cedar, the acacia, the myrtle, and the olive. I will set in the desert the cypress, the plain, and the pine together, so that all may see and know and <coughs> consider and understand that the hand of the Lord has done this. The Holy One of Israel has created it. The legend of the Christmas tree. The Christmas tree is widely used in our celebration of Christmas. Green trees, blue trees, frosted snow-covered trees, inside a warm room, lighted trees, living trees, all are the trees of Christmas. Our use of Christmas trees is so widespread. We have forgotten the beginning. Martin Luther put lighted candles on his tree to, recap to recapture the glistening twigs of the tree in the forest. He also topped his tree with a star to commemorate that star which was in the Bethlehem sky as recorded in scriptures. Behold, there come wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. He said the Christmas tree, with its top pointing up to heaven, was like hands folded in prayer, pointing to the thorn of grace from which we received our Savior. Christ born, 
when the star was over Bethlehem. Flower of the holy night, star shaped, radiant shaped, blood red petals, star flowers for the holy night. Now everywhere, on cards and on trees, in churches and in homes, the poinsettia takes its place, reminding us of a holy night, pointing to a good Friday. I can come up top. You might know that anybody else come up here? Uh, all right, everybody. So it's my task about once a month to get up here and do a children's sermon. So I was at Pastor. All right. Got any ideas for me? What I'm going to do? Mark, you got to talk about Advent this week, okay? So that means I had to kind of go and look up Advent a little moment. I'd go to the library and see if there's any books on Advent, you know, read about it a little bit, and research. So, does anybody know offhand, like, what does Advent mean? When you, when you hear the word Advent, does anything pop in your head? Yes. <coughs> Advent calendar. Yes, good. Logan, how about you? Four Sundays. What else Advent? Anybody else, uh, anything else pop in your head? Anyone want to think of Advent? Candles. Advent wreath, right? So, a lot of... Uh, Traditions. If you listen to the um, readings today and you look around, you see a lot of traditions and things that have to do with Advent. But the meaning of Advent means like the coming and waiting, right? So 
What are, what are we waiting for right now? Advent season is starting, or does it start on the third? Or when does it actually start? For us today. Yeah, it's it's Advent is on. The season is going. Okay, so what are, what are we waiting for? Christmas, Jesus. We are waiting for to celebrate the birth of Jesus. We're also waiting for the return of Jesus to come again, right? Anticipation. Uh, what are some things that, what other things do we wait for around this time? Well, you just, you're anticipating presents, okay? Yeah, with Santa Claus, obviously. We see that present under the tree. Somebody, sometimes you put the presents under there and you, you shake it, try to find out what, what's inside, right? Try to, you know, weigh it, make people take it back, look at it, right? Sometimes you have the, yeah, you, you try to figure out what they are, right? Anyways. But how, how, when we're waiting, we also got to go go through those stages. So if you look at tra traditions of the, there's like a wreath here. This is the Advent wreath. And I was looking up. I was like, all right, looking up the wreath. And then some wreaths got the pink candles and some got blue. And then you got to light them in a certain way. I was kind of like, okay, I got to get this straight, right? But the main thing is we're waiting, waiting for the light of Jesus to come. Okay, in, in the two different ways that we're waiting for him. We're anticipating celebrating Christmas. So I kind of looked up the different colors. We heard a little bit about blue today. The meaning of blue. Does anyone remember what the meaning of blue? Hope. Great job. The meaning of blue can symbolize hope. And I looked up, how about pink? Why is there one pink cam candle? Joy. Joy. Joy is the pink candle. Great job. So... That symbolizes it. And, and then I was also reading a little bit that they symbolize peace and love as well. So, yeah, a lot of a symbolism going on in Advent. Um, does anybody have an Advent calendar at home? You heard about that right away? I have a Lego one. Oh, <laughs> nice. Hey, is it in the office in there? Well, no, but it's not. Yes, I'll bring it. Yeah, bring that in. I want to see one. <laughs> Oh. Jewelry, you got jewelry in every single window? Nice. <laughs> Angie must have splurged for that. Yeah. Nice. Um, I had taco one when I was a kid. And then you had to make sure that, you know, me and my sister would fight over who got the chocolate. So it really was kind of like a tradition of us arguing every morning for who got the, the stale chocolate in there. But yeah, you, you got to get up early if you're going to get that from us. Oh, nice. Nice. Anyways, Advent calendar. So when I think about Advent, that's just the memory that I have is the silly chocolate calendars or whatever. But again, we're anticipating, we're waiting. You probably got the big piece of chocolate at the end that you wait for. That's the best one, right? <laughs> Hopefully. Right, Harper? <laughs> yes, we should get one. If we don't have one, we should get one. Maybe the Lego one. Anyways, but Advent, tradition, waiting for arrival. But it's important with all these different traditions to remember what the main thing, what really is the main importance, and that's... Uh, waiting to celebrate the birth of Jesus, waiting to anticipate for the light to come again, you know, save us the promise that has been given to us, right? That's different from any other religion. That's the most important thing. So um, let's just say a quick prayer, all right? Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you um, for being the light that we are here to wait for, that you gather us all together so that we can anticipate celebrating the great uh, things in, in our life that, that you've given us. Thank you for coming and being our Savior, thank you for bringing us all together today. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to share a few words with you from Anne Weems. This is from her book, Kneeling in Bethlehem. And since it is Christ the King Sunday, I'm going to read to you about the church year from Anne Weems. The church is Advent. The unwrapping of God's greatest gift is near. Advent coming. God will take away the tinsel and decorate our human hearts in hope so that Christians can sit laughing in the rain, knowing that the Lord is going to shine in upon their being. For no matter how long the darkness, God will send the light. In spite of cursing and violence and the massacring human dignity, we will dance in the streets of Bethlehem, for he will be born. The church is epiphany. We are the magi searching 
resplendent in this world's accoutrements of knowledge and wealth and achievement. But we search for something more. And of all unlikely places, in a stable, the deity appears. The morning of our Lord bursts in upon our ordinary lives like fireworks in the snow. Only God would send a little baby king, and we are on our knees, where we are within reach of our full personhood. The church is Good Friday, darkness burnt into blackness, abysmal absence of anything good. We acknowledge that death is real, and we tremble for a world that would kill its God. Our feet stand in quicksand, our voices echo sterile silence, we huddle together to meet the dark and the death, forgetting what was taught us, forgetting that somewhere a seed is sprouting, somewhere a child is growing, and we will see, all we see is Christ crucified. The church is Easter, out of death, life, out of darkness, a lush green world, flowers in the ice, sun rays in the storm, mustard seeds galore. Our souls enter a spiritual springtime, our bodies given over to leaping and dancing, our very being saturated in hosannas. Our shouting crashes in upon this world. The Lord lives. We live. Resurrection resounds throughout our community. The church is Pentecost. The Holy Spirit poured out upon us and sends us out together aflame with new life. Inheritors of the wealth of God, life abundant. We are liberated from the prisons of pettiness, jealousy, and greed. Liberated to be the church. We are free to free others. We are affirmed to affirm others. We are loved to love others. We are family. We are a community. We are the church triumphant. You, me, anyone who would come unto the Lord renewed, redirected, empowered to change things and lives together in love and wholeness. We are the Lord's church, the church of justice and mercy, the people sent to open prisons, heal the sick, clothe the naked, feed the hungry, to reconcile, to be alleluias when there is no music, the mantle upon our shoulders. Joy is apparent in our living. We have been commissioned to be the church of Jesus Christ. And then this is the angel filled Advent. Wouldn't it be wonderful if Advent came filled with angels and hallelujahs? Wouldn't it be perfect if we were greeted on these December mornings with the hovering of heavenly hosts, turning their hearts and brushing up on their fa la la's? Wouldn't it be incredible if their music filled our waking hours with the promise of peace on earth, and if each Advent night we dreamed of nothing but goodwill? Wouldn't we be ecstatic if we could learn those angels shopping or trim the tree and have them hold our hands and dance through our houses decorating? And oh, how glorious it would be to sit in church next to an angel and sing our heart the heralds. What an advent that would be. What Christmas spirit we could have. An angel filled advent has so many possibilities, but in lieu of that, perhaps we can give thanks for the good earthly joys we have been given and for the earthly angels that we know who do such a good job of filling our advent with hallelujahs. Please stand.
Come, Advent God, and complete the special work of love which you began in Jesus of Nazareth. Many are cast down with spiritual needs, thirsting for peace of your forgiveness and the warmth of your healing love. Come to them with the grace they desperately need. At evening or midnight, morning or midday, come, Lord Jesus. Many are in despair through physical hardship, seeking relief from their burdens and hope in the midst of their cares. Come to them with the help they desperately need. At evening or midnight, morning or midday, come, Lord Jesus. Your church and all the world also need saving from everything that threatens its mission. Wherever it is persecuted, keep it faithful. Where it persecutes, rebuke it. Where it is seduced by affluence, shake it to its foundations. Where it is self-satisfied, thoroughly unsettle it. Where it is weak, poor, and meek, bless it with your joy, peace, and strength. At evening or midnight, morning or midday, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Advent God, and complete your work in Jesus Christ, through whom we offer these prayers. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share the blessing of Christ's peace. Please stand. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we take of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated.
please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God, for whom we wait, you come to us in the broken bread and the cup we share. Make us ready always to welcome Christ into our hearts and send us forth to be your people in the world, announcing your coming among us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you choose, you can be instruments of hope in the world. We so choose, so we will spread the hope and promise of the coming child. If you choose, you can counter the voices of anxiety and despair in the world. We so choose, so we sing songs of hope because the world can be changed. If you choose, you can fight against the fear that freezes the heart of many. We so choose. Choice is ours to make how we live into the possibilities of Christmas. The beauty is that we do not live out the choice by our own strength. Go with God, who feeds our hopes and quiets our fears. <laughs> Always and everywhere. Amen. <clears throat> Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.